we will now talk about convergence in LP spaces. So X S mu measure space. So LP mu are the spaces 1 less than equal to P less than equal to infinity with the norm norm P. So we say Fn converges to F in LP mu if norm Fn minus P F P goes to 0 as n tends to infinity. So Cauchy if for every epsilon positive there exists a capital N such that for all n m greater or equal to capital N we have norm Fn minus Fm P is less than epsilon. So this is the thing. So we want to show that these spaces are complete namely the symmetric space every Cauchy sequence which converges it's symmetric uh, then it's a complete space and a complete uh, non-linear space is called a Banach space. So we want to show that all these LP spaces are Banach spaces. So before that let us start with the following lemma. There are many ways to do it so we will do it in one way. So one less than equal to p less than infinity. <coughs> So, Fn Cauchy in LP mu implies the sequence is Cauchy in measure. So, we have studied convergence and Cauchy in measure. So, we are using those results now. So, proof. So, let epsilon be greater than 0. Then for all n m positive integers, we define a n m epsilon as the set of all x in x such that mod f n x minus f m x is bigger than or equal to epsilon. Okay, so then integral over x mod fn minus fm power p d mu is bigger than equal to because it's a non-negative integral a n m epsilon mod fn minus fm power p d mu and but on this set this is bigger than equal to epsilon so this is greater to epsilon power p and uh, measure of a n m epsilon. So, this implies that measure of a n m epsilon is less than or equal to uh, norm f n minus f m p whole power p that is what left hand side by epsilon p and so. So, for every epsilon fixed because so f n Cauchy in LP mu implies of course that mu uh, so there exists a n capital N so set for all n m greater or equal to so given eta positive uh, greater or equal to capital N we have norm f n minus f m p uh, is less than eta. Therefore, for all n m greater or equal to n, we have mu of a n m epsilon is less than or equal to eta power p by epsilon power p and therefore, you have f n is Cauchy in. So, this implies that f n is Cauchy in measure. Okay. So now we have the following important theorem. Sometimes it's called the Ries Fisher theorem also, but anyway, that's uh, less important. So let X S mu measure space 1 less than or equal to P less than or equal to infinity, then LP mu is a Banach space. Banach space is a complete non-linear space and therefore 
need to show every uh, Cauchy sequence in LP mu is convergent. So that's all we need to show. Okay, so step one. One less than equal to P strictly less than infinity. Okay, so then Fn Cauchy implies Cauchy in measure by the lemma above. And that implies there exists a subsequence Fnk which is almost uniformly Cauchy. We have seen this before. Given a sequence which is Cauchy in measure, then there is a subsequence which is almost uniformly Cauchy. And that implies that Fnk converges to F almost everywhere. So, there so implies there exists F measurable such that F and K converges to F point wise almost everywhere. Okay, so let epsilon be we now have a candidate for the limit. So we have to show this so to show F belongs to LP mu and Fn goes to F in LP mu. So, if we can show these two things, our theorem is proved. So, let epsilon be positive and let n uh, belong to a natural number such that norm fn minus fm p is less than epsilon for all n m greatly equal to capital N. So, keep n fixed. Of course, n is greater than n. Okay. So, by Fatou's lemma, since fm converges, fm converges to f almost everywhere, and therefore you have norm integral mod fn minus f power p d mu over x is less than or equal to lim inf as n n uh, as k tends to infinity of integral so uh, sorry f n k converges to f almost everywhere okay so mod f n k minus f power p d mu over x And that is of course less than or equal to epsilon power p by the by hypothesis because this k is tending to infinity f n k will so f n uh, k minus f n sorry going to this and therefore you have two things so this implies that f n minus f belongs to lp mu and since fn is already in LP mu, this implies that f is in LP mu. Also, fn converges to f in LP mu. This is less than for all n greater equal to capital N. Okay, so therefore this converges. So this proves that. So now the case which we have to deal with, this is easier. So step 2 p equals infinity. So, fn Cauchy in LP mu. So, there exists for every k in n, there exists nk in n such that for all m n greatly equal to nk, we have norm fm minus fn is less than 1 over k. So, this infinity that means that is there exists ek contained in x mu of ek 
equal to 0 and on ek complement mod fmx minus fnx is less than 1 by k. So let E equals union EK. So mu E equal to 0 and E complement is nothing but intersection EK complement. So if X belongs to E complement, it is in every EK complement and therefore FNX is quotient. Okay. So, you take fx equals limit n tending to infinity fnx and fx equal to 0 on e. We do not care what you put on e because e has measure 0 and you have that f therefore belongs to L infinity of mu and fn goes to f. Uh, on E complement that is almost everywhere. Yes. Okay, so that proves that this is a Banach space. So this completes the proof on both. So corollary X S mu measure space one less than equal to p less than equal to infinity and fn converges to f in lp mu then there exists a subsequence fnk such that fnk convert this to f almost everywhere. So proof fn goes to f almost everywhere if p equals infinity. We have already seen and there exists fnk going to f almost everywhere if 1 less than equal to p less than infinity. We have seen this so seen in proof of the and therefore this now you can also explicitly construct this subsequence in case of uh, 1 less than equal to p less than infinity and that you can find in almost any textbook on measure theory uh, in particular i will say say compare rudin real and complex analysis or the book i am following measure than integration. Trim 77. Okay, so you can find it in either of the books, an explicit construction. Now, uh, this there is additional advantage in this proof that in fact, uh, explicit construction of f and k also shows that the subsequence is bounded above by a fixed function. Anyway, that is uh, not so very important for, for the moment and so we will uh, we will not give that proof. We have used the convergence in measure arguments which is uh, easier argument to do. Okay. So then theorem 1 less than equal to p less than infinity fn sequence in Lp mu. fn converges to f almost everywhere. 
then fn converges to f in lp mu if and only if norm fn p converges to norm fp so you have pointwise convergence you want to know when does it converge in lp mu uh, which is some kind of a convergence of some integral now to check that we have a easier condition here namely you take the norm of fn if that converges to the norm of f in addition to converging pointwise then you have also convergence in lp so proof so fn converges to f in lp norm is a continuous mapping and therefore this implies that norm fnp converges to norm fp so that's obvious and therefore you have you don't have to do anything here conversely so fn goes to f almost everywhere and norm fnp converges to norm fp fn f in lp so we want to know show that this converges in uh, uh, in lp okay so for that we take capital fn equals mod fn minus f power p we want to show the integral so to show integral fn d mu over x goes to 0 so that's what we want to show now t going to mod t power p is convex now from fn equals mod fn minus f power p is less than equal to 2 power p minus 1 we have seen this already before of mod fn p plus mod f p let me call this gn then gn is integrable fn is less than or equal to gn and fn converges to gn almost everywhere further by hypothesis we have integral fn d i uh, sorry integral g n d mu over x goes to integral over g sorry x g d mu this is wrong g n goes to g almost everywhere and where, where g is equal to 2 power p mod f p and this is also finite because what is this integral this is 2 power p norm f p power p ok so this so by generalized dominated convergence theorem we have seen this this implies that integral f n goes to 0 that is f n goes to f in L p Okay, so that completes it. So we, we, we have shown that it's a Banach space, we have seen about convergence. So next time we will take up some other special properties uh, of uh, uh, LP spaces like density uh, and then separability and such topological properties.